Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Physio Quick Recap. So today's topic is MMT. MMT is manual muscle testing. It is used to determine the degree and extent of muscle weakness resulting from injury, disease or disuse. So what is MMT? MMT is a procedure for the evaluation of strength of a muscle. The muscle can be individual or group. So MMT can be done on individual muscle or group of muscles. Let us know the uses of MMT. First, the severity of the problem can be understood. As MMT is based on grades, we can get to know the severity to which the muscle is weak. Second, it helps in planning our treatment goals. If our muscle is weak, obviously the treatment goal would be to improve the strength of the muscle. Third, we can determine the extent and degree of muscle weakness resulting from disease or injury by conducting MMT. Fourth, we can get to know the idea about the level of innervation of a muscle. If the muscle is weak, obviously the innervation would be less. Fifth, MMT is an important tool for all the members of rehabilitation team, especially physiotherapists. Sixth, MMT helps to determine the problem of the muscle, to determine the muscle weakness and to improve the muscle strength. If the muscle is weak, it can lead to contractures and therefore deformity. It helps to calculate the effectiveness of the treatment to the physiotherapist. Let us know why MMT is performed. To get some answers such as, is a particular muscle normal? Is it weak? Is it strong enough? Is it weak on both the sides? Is it weak on one side? Is the proximal muscle are more weaker than the distal one? Or is there any particular pattern of muscle weakness? Now, let us discuss about the grades of MMT. There are mainly three scales for MMT. First, MCR scale. Second, Oxford scale. Third, Kendall scale. The most commonly used scale is MCR scale. First, let us know what is MCR scale. MCR scale refers to Medical Research Council scale. So let us discuss each grade in detail. So zero grade in MCR scale refers to no contraction. Grade one means there is flickering of contraction. Grade two, there is full range of motion in gravity eliminated position. Grade three, there is full range of motion in against gravity position. Grade four, full range of motion against gravity with minimal resistance. Grade five, full range of motion against gravity with maximal resistance. Let us discuss the MCR scale in detail with an example. Let us take the example as biceps. Biceps is responsible for flexion of elbow. To check the MMT of biceps muscle, ask the patient to flex the elbow. MMT grade is zero if the patient is not able to perform full elbow flexion, nor can the therapist palpate the contraction. MMT grade is 1 if the patient is not able to perform the elbow flexion but the therapist can palpate the muscle contraction of biceps. Grade 2 the patient is able to perform full elbow flexion but in gravity eliminated position. Grade 3 if the patient is able to perform full elbow flexion but in against gravity position. Grade 4 the patient is able to perform full range of elbow flexion against gravity and by the therapist giving him minimal resistance then it is graded as 4. Grade 5 if the therapist if the patient is able to perform full range of elbow flexion against gravity by the therapist giving him maximal resistance then the grade is considered as 5. Oxford scale is similar to MCR scale but the only difference is the grade 5 in Oxford scale is described differently that is it is described as muscle function is normal but in MCR scale it is described as full range of motion against gravity with maximal resistance. In Kendall scale the description of the grades are similar to MCR scale. MCR scale is based on 
quantity but kendall scale is based on quality in kendall scale none means no visible or palpable contraction of the muscle trace means there is visible contraction or palpable contraction of the muscle poor means there is full range of motion of the muscle there is full range of motion in gravity eliminated position fair means full range of motion against gravity good means full range of motion against gravity with moderate resistance normal means full range of motion against gravity with maximal resistance let us discuss principles of mmt there are eight principles of mmt positioning stabilization demonstration application of grades application of resistance checking normal strength objectivity documentation positioning of the patient is an important principle of mmt the position of the patient depends upon the muscle that needs to be tested see to it that the patient is free from discomfort or pain while performing mmt it is important to stabilize the patient while carrying out mmt stabilization is provided by the hand placement of the therapist the proximal hand of the therapist is kept on the origin of the muscle and proximal joint the distal hand of the therapist provides resistance or assistance depending upon the performance of the patient in this picture you can see that proximal hand of the therapist is used to provide stabilization to the proximal joint and distal hand of the therapist is used to provide assistance or resistance before checking the mmt of the muscle the therapist has to clearly demonstrate the desired movement for example if the therapist want to check the mmt of biceps muscle then the therapist has to clearly demonstrate how to perform elbow flexion to the patient application of resistance the resistance is applied slowly and gradually the resistance is usually provided by manual resistance there is something called as make test and break test if the resistance is applied throughout the range of motion it is called as make test if the resistance is applied at the end range of motion it is called as break test checking normal strength the therapist has to perform mmt on both the sides the therapist performs mmt on the normal side first and then on the abnormal side to compare it objectivity the therapist must have the ability to palpate and observe the tendon or muscle response in a very weak muscle let us discuss the indications of mmt all the conditions that causes muscle weakness are considered as indications of mmt lower motor neuron diseases neurological diseases such as multiple sclerosis my myasthenia gravis muscular dystrophy amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and gullion bear syndrome etc and some musculoskeletal disorders contraindications of mmt cerebral palsy most common type of cerebral palsy is spastic cerebral palsy and hence it is contraindicated cardiovascular disease or brain injury which causes spasticity dislocated or unhealed fractures myositis ossifications parkinson's disease due to rigidity pain inflammation and severe cardiorespiratory diseases let us know the limitations of mmt upper motor neuron lesion spastic muscles have poor control from higher centers thus it is better to go for voluntary control assessment rather than mmt restricted rom due to transcranial doppler transcranial doppler can give faulty interpretation about mmt presence of pain and swelling pain and swelling increases intraarticular tension causing irritation of joints and can affect mmt result thus in case always mention about presence of pain along with the grade types of contraction mmt gives idea about quality of concentric contraction alone
not the eccentric contraction which is more functional understanding of the commands it is difficult for certain age groups to understand the commands of mmt and hence to perform mmt like pediatric age group less than 5 and people with low iq and higher mental disorders strength versus endurance mmt gives knowledge only about the strength and not about the endurance if you like this video please like comment share and subscribe thank you friends for watching this video stay tuned for up